G'day and welcome to episode 76 and Uzbekistan. In the last episode we drove up an incredible valley through some friendly villages to a crystal blue lake, all before heading to the border and finishing our time in Tajikistan. In this episode we cross the border, do some maintenance on the troop in Samarkand before continuing north. So we just left the Uzbekistan side of the border. Um, it was probably one of the more thorough side, uh, thorough searches which we've been through. Um, they wanted to check everything out and I guess it probably took what, like two hours on that side? Do you reckon? Yeah, easily. Yeah. We had to wait for those a group of German oh. bikers hold us up a bit. But um, that was definitely the most thorough, apart from China, the most thorough border control we've been to. But they're all nice. Yeah. They even put out like a, a camera down inside the fuel tanks. Apparently they, um, they have problems with people putting drugs in the fuel tanks coming out of the border. It's crazy. Which they had to laugh about. Yeah. <laughs> and then the guy just laughed at my passport photo on the way out and told me I looked like a Barbie doll. <laughs> Which is a new one. Um, but yeah, so anyway, now we are heading into Samarkand, which is about 40 kilometers from the border. Um, but before we do anything, anything fun, we have to go and uh, visit a mechanic. Yeah, so we noticed, we noticed a bit of a noise yesterday start when we came out of uh, Loudon Lake. And I checked, pulled the wheels off last night and checked and the brake pads have worn down again. So um, thankfully we've got some spares. So. <coughs> We'll just go to our mechanics now and throw it up on the stands and change them out. It's, uh, I was actually a bit surprised that they've gone because we changed the last ones just yeah. over a year ago. Um, but then again, we are pretty heavy and we have been going through some pretty mountainous regions. So we'll get those swapped out and that should do us for the rest of the trip. Hopefully. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so that's what we're doing and this is what our first impression of Uzbekistan is. series for a while you'll remember in um, Bali we had this same problem on the same wheel that's not what brake pads are supposed to look like that's the noise it actually got worse today so I think we got lucky that um, it happened here I mean we could have done it anyway but it's fortunate that we did could come to somewhere like this and just get it done and it was also fortunate that we had spares because they don't have Toyota in um, Uzbekistan so we would have had to order new ones in which would have taken time which we don't really have at the moment, so. Yep. One thing I didn't mention, Oscar, whose workshop this is, he actually. It's gonna be exciting. Um, Oscar actually lived in Sydney for 12 years, so makes things a bit easier being able to converse quite comfortably in English. So um, he's just about, he's just gonna change the bearings on this another car, and then um, we're gonna shout him some beers. Oscar has just brought us down to have some shashlik dinner. So this is shashlik. Um, it's a pretty common Central Asian dish. So it's basically just a big skewer with some meat on it. So yeah, we've got some mince. I'm not sure what this one is. Chicken maybe? Beef. 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 Uh, lamb and some pork. So yeah, we're going to have some of that dinner. And then I think we're going to go to We have waited till this afternoon. It's like 5.30 or 6 o'clock or something now. Uh, just because it was pretty hot today and there's not much escape from the shade down here in the middle of the day. But yeah, it's a very beautiful, beautiful place. And we've only been here for about two minutes and we've already spotted three brides with big dresses. They look very beautiful. So yeah, we're just going to walk around. It's actually a really nice temperature now. It's very balmy. <laughs> Samarkand is among the oldest continuously inhabited cities in Central Asia, said to be founded around 2,700 years ago, around the same time as Rome. 
It thrived due to its location on the Silk Road and at times was one of the largest cities in the region. These buildings and square make up the Rajasthan, a combination of mosaic tiled covered structures which were the heart of the ancient city. The Rajasthan, seen today, was built in stages over a 200 year period and used for studies, science, prayer and as a residential college. In 2001, the city made it onto the UNESCO World Heritage List, considered the crossroads of culture. Easier to understand from its history being ruled by Persians, Greeks, Turks, Mongols, Chinese and Russians. So the last two nights we've been camped out the back of Oscar's workshop, um, so that's been really convenient, so thanks for having us Oscar. Um, so yeah, this morning Mark and I are heading out of town today. Um, I think we're just going to see how far we can get and try and find a camp spot around there. morning um, so the drinking water like springs are not easily as easily to find as what they were in Tajikistan um, so we found this one on the highway and it seems like it's probably it's a popular fill-up spot um, as all the locals are stopping by and filling out their bottles so it's just a little skirt over here Mark's turned out. so yeah we've got to fill up the main tank and then also the um, contain the water tank behind my seat because we are completely out of water. So, glad that we found this one. We drove about 200 kilometers to the west of Bukhara yesterday and found this awesome camp spot in the dunes. So yeah, we had to get over a couple of dunes to get here so that we're away from the road, um, which was a bit of fun. And it's actually so hot. Last night when we went to bed at like 9.30, it was still about 35, 37 degrees, something like that. It was pretty warm. Um, and yeah, this morning at like 8.30, I think it's like 9.30 now, but when we checked at 8.30, it was already 38 degrees. So it's pretty warm, but it's a dry heat. So it's actually quite, okay um, and there's a breeze so it's yeah it's not too bad just want to go for a swim but it's actually been a really cool camp spot there's um these little animals i don't know what they are there's one digging over here probably can't see it with this lens um but they're kind of like i don't know they're like a meerkat but then like a little marsupial i'm not really sure what they are i'm gonna have to google it when i get reception so we're going to a fort today about 200 kilometers away and we're going to camp next to the fort so that that'll be pretty cool um <laughs> what I name them? That's kind of embarrassing. I named the little animals. Well, there was one to start off with, and I named it Frederick. And then there was two, so then now they're just the Fredericks because I don't know what they are. Anyway, ready? Time to pack up. All of these holes are all the Frederick holes. We're just digging and digging and digging.
Yeah, so that's about as close as I can get. They're like probably a little bit taller than the size of my hand. And they stand up really up straight and they're quite muscular because I just dig all day, all these holes. Yeah, really cool little animals. I kind of want to keep him. So it turns out our friends, the Fredericks, are actually yellow ground squirrels, which are native to these sorts of dry environments in this part of the world. They enjoy company and live in large colonies and feed on bulbs, seeds, stems and leaves that they dig up from the ground. So one of the things or reasons that we bought this jerry can in um, Kyrgyzstan is because there's no diesel in Uzbekistan, well no official diesel. The, um, so most of the trucks and farm machinery and buses and stuff are all converted to natural gas which is um, what the government's trying to push. So you can buy it but it's all black market diesel so it's not of really good quality. So we bought this in Kyrgyzstan and filled it from Gazprom, which is um, a Russian brand, good quality, jerry, good jerry can too, so it wasn't expensive for the jerry can. So we bought this, good diesel, good jerry can. So we have enough diesel now to get us all the way through to Turkmenistan. The diesel there is not probably going to be good either, but um, at least we didn't have the problem now with not potentially finding diesel in Uzbekistan. Um, we'll also keep the jerry can now too for Iran, where the diesel is like a couple of cents a litre uh, and then we'll carry as much diesel into Europe as possible because diesel in Europe is like a euro 60 <laughs> per litre so Sounds like a nightmare. big <laughs> influx there so yeah we want to carry as much as possible just to save some dollars and then uh, we won't need a jerry can after that so we'll just um, pass it on to another overlander that's why I've kept it in the wrapper to keep it nice and nice and shiny. Nice little present. <laughs> um, so we're going to top that up now and um, so out of that we should probably get about 130 k's um, but yeah, it's really just insurance. We had enough to get us through the country anyway. Um, so that was just a little bit extra, just in case. Yeah, cool. We just came back out to the main track. Mark's just unlocking the hubs now. And I just wanted to point something out. So in this part of the world, the locals love to drink vodka, which hum in a glass bottle. Those glass bottles then get left all over the sand. There's another one there, another one up there. So yeah, it's really not good for if you're driving through the sand, because I mean, that's not good for your tires. Um, but yeah, just we've seen it everywhere throughout Central Asia, which is a bit of a shame, really. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> Leaving me. Anyways, sort of point that out. That's it for this episode. Join us in the next where we camp by a fort in the desert. Thanks for watching. See ya!